Anyone remember the paleo art meme of kangaroo kicking dinosaurs? As a 2000s kid, I was inundated by both 90s and 2000s paleo art, forcing my dumb little child brain to be more critical of how dinosaurs and other prehistoric critters were reconstructed. I also attached myself, specifically, to the dinosaurs as a chillin, so I also got a lot of super old stuff once I ran out of newer stuff. I consumed art of the old Crystal Palace dinosaurs, the dinosaur renaissance recons, and the new hyper-colored, oddly feathered ones of the 2000s. One of the many memes I remember pretty clearly is the kangaroo-kicking theropod dinosaur. Apparently I'm not the only one as fellow Psycomer TK Sigin wrote about this good meme on his blog Manospondylus. There's a lot of soft kangaroo kick memes around, as well as hard and clear examples of it. It originated as a hypothesis from famed dino renaissance man Dr. Bob Bakker and his assistant and illustrator Gregory S. Paul in the late 70s. This is apparently the earliest piece of paleo art depicting a theropod dinosaur jumping back on its tail and pushing out with its feet in defense. This piece, published in a Journal of Science article by J. L. Marx in 1978, showcases a Ceratosaurus against a pair of Allosaurus. According to Dr. Bakker, some primitive theropods like Ceratosaurus had larger foot claws and heavier, more muscular tails than later theropods like Allosaurs and Tyrannosaurs. With these observations, Bakker came up with the idea that perhaps these kinds of theropods were capable of balancing on their tails and kicking during fights, similar to the only other predominantly bipedal mammal alive today, the kangaroo. This is, as far as I can find, the only time this idea has been brought up. Bakker never published a paper or full detailed article on this idea. It did, however, get copied enough times to become a paleoart meme. As such, there's no way to thoroughly figure out the scientific viability of this idea, or the accuracy of this scene by Paul. The amount of paleoart perpetuating the kangaroo kick meme doesn't help suss out the accuracy of this idea either. Has any study ever been conducted on the biomechanics of dinosaur tails to see if they were strong enough to hold up the dinosaur's body long enough to complete the kick? Based on my frankly limited personal knowledge on biomechanics and functional morphology, I'd say this seems pretty unlikely. The tails of non-avian theropods in general, and specifically the primitive theropods, don't look like they could bend the same way depicted by Greg Paul. The neural spines and chevron bones, these pointy bits up here and down here respectively, are unusual in that they are super long and super straight. In most theropods, they bend backwards, but here, they're straight up and down. This told Dr. Bakker that Ceratosaurus may have had a crocodile-like tail it used to swim. This might have played a part in the kangaroo kick idea. Is there more to this, or is it just another odd idea about dinosaurs that got thrown out? This idea is really interesting in a paleoart history perspective as it represents an inversion of a classic trope in dinosaur reconstruction. Since kangaroos are the only predominantly bipedal mammals with muscular tails alive today, they were used as references for reconstructing dinosaurs when clearly bipedal fossils were found. This was the norm for dinosaurs in paleoart until the 1960s and 70s. They were fat, lazy, lizard-like roos. One of the main characteristics of kangaroos that carried over to the dinosaur paleoart was the third limb, the extremely muscular tail used as a prop for various reasons. Not that other third limb, you degenerates. Most theropod dinosaurs weren't portrayed as active roo-like hoppers, but dawdling, tripodal fools of antediluvia. They were stripped of the kangaroo's gracile and dynamic nature and left only with the awkwardness. Dr. Bakker and Paul did a 360 inversion 4D chess version of this old trope. They gave the Ceratosaurus the most dynamic part of a roux while leaving out all the awkward bits. This isn't a unique thing done with the roux to theropod comparison as the dinosaur renaissance saw a great number of orthodox idea inversions regarding how we thought of dinosaurs. Bakker did something similar with stegosaurs and sauropods. Instead of a giant, curl-backed, shuffling pig lizard, 
Bakker suggested Stegosaurus might have been a high browser that could rear up on its hind limbs with its tail as support to reach into higher branches. This speculative bit of behavior made sense with the Stegosaurus of the late 80s and 90s, as the incomplete nature of the handful of specimens known at the time meant the whole image of Stegosaurus had to be compiled from these specimens. This resulted in a Stegosaurus with long hind limbs, short forelimbs, a relatively short but mobile neck, and a high tail to hip to back orientation. After a much more complete single specimen was discovered and named Sophie, it was clear Stegosaurus was more similar to its close relatives than originally thought. They had limbs more equal in length and a longer neck. Bakker's rearing Stegosaurus reconstruction relied on the bizarre nature of the extremely long hind limbs and short forelimbs. Perhaps this idea won't hold up to scrutiny anymore. As you can see here in his illustrations, Bakker did the same with sauropods. Unlike the stegosaur, sauropods may have been more likely to rear back on their tails, at least a little bit. Researcher Dr. Heinrich Mallison published a paper in 2009 that took a look at the possibility of sauropod rearing. He found titanosaurs were not up to the task. They had an unusually flexible backbone, which would have decreased stability in a tripodal posture and would have put more strain on the muscles. The brachiosaurids probably couldn't rear up either, as their center of gravity was much farther forward than other sauropods, which would cause such a stance to be unstable. Diplodocids, on the other hand, are probably one of the few groups that were well adapted to using their tails as a prop. According to Dr. Mallison's work, the diplodocids had a center of gravity directly over their hips, which allowed them a greater balance on two legs. Diplodocids also had the most mobile necks of sauropods, a well-muscled pelvic girdle, and tail vertebrae with a specialized shape that would allow the tail to bear weight at the point it touched the ground. Dr. Mallison concluded diplodocids were better adapted to rearing than elephants, which are more than capable of doing so. The kangaroo comparison wasn't only for the tail and tripodal stance, for back in the 1800s, some researchers thought theropods hopped like them too. Famed Bone Wars miscreant Edward Drinker Cope originally figured the hadrosaur trachodon and the theropod lalaps moved like the ruse of the outback. Cope commissioned famed paleoartist Charles R. Knight to make the famous Leaping Lalaps piece, in which two of these apparently ferocious and high-strung beasts decided to tussle with a seemingly bounding gait similar to the kangaroo kick. Another infamous example of Ruosaurs comes to us from the year 1984. A team of researchers named a trace fossil Sorosaltopus, which means jumping lizard foot, because they thought the prince belonged to a theropod dinosaur that bounded across the surface like a wallaby. Turns out this set of tracks was laid down by the flippers of a sea turtle when it dragged itself across a beach. There currently exists no evidence that any known non-avian dinosaur moved by hopping. None have the adaptations seen in kangaroo rats, frogs, rabbits, or kangaroos. You'd have to find a dinosaur with very similar biomechanics in the legs to begin hypothesizing a hop. Roos have really weird legs. Animals that walk on the entire foot, the toes, the metatarsals, the tarsals, and the heel are called plantigrade. Animals that walk on the ends of their toes are called digitigrade. Kangaroos are weird because they are technically plantigrades as they stand and rest on the whole foot, but when they get up to hop, they bounce on their toes like a digitigrade. All living and extinct dinosaurs are digitigrade and walk on their toes. Many small birds hop on occasion, but not even remotely similar to the hop of a kangaroo. If we really want to find an ancient, semi-reptilian critter that did hop like a roo, we wouldn't have to look too far from the dinosaurs. The much larger clade Avimetatarsalia contains the dinosauria, the pterosauria, and all the in-betweens and offshoots. The earlier clade that led into the dinosauria proper was the dinosauromorphs and dinosauriforms. Some of these critters could have hopped like a wallaby. The Lagerpetids, like Lagerpetin and Congonophon, had plantigrade feet with super long heels that allowed them to hop on their toes when the going got tough. 
a recent study published in Nature by Drs. Sterling Nesbitt, Martin Ezkra, and friends found these hopping legerpetids were the closest relatives to the pterosaurs. Their wallaby way may have been the thing that helped them get off the ground. The legerpetids are now almost confirmed to be essentially flightless pterosaurs, as they branched off from the pterosaur line before the evolution of gliding and flight, retaining the pep in their step instead, no matter what David Peters has to say. Like the kangaroo inversion of Bakker and Paul, Dr. Mark Witten has reconstructed these animals as rather jerboa, or kangaroo-like, in dynamic bouncing postures with thin coats of protofeathers. One kangaroo-kicking dinosaur I'd now like to bring up tried his best to beat the biggest monkey to ever live. In Toho's King Kong Escapes, Kong has to battle a blue and salmon-colored kaiju-sized theropod dinosaur called Gorosaurus. Looking like the reconstructions of the carnosaurs of the time, Gorosaurus comes equipped with wide, spade-shaped toe claws, thick, reinforced feet, a pair of canine-like fangs, two mammalian ear wedges, a medially oriented crest of backwards pointing osteoderms from the shoulders to the tail, a long muscular tail, and a trypanosaur like claw at the tail's tip. As essentially just a really big dinosaur, Gorosaurus doesn't have any powers. Instead, he rocks back on his tail and Kangaroo kicks his foes, in this case, Kong. He also appears for a few minutes in the film Destroy All Monsters, where he attacks Paris while under alien mind control, eventually helping to defeat King Ghidorah. I think we can put this paleo art meme to bed. There's no evidence for it in the dinosaurs, and all of them were pretty far removed from whatever the marsupial bouncers are doing. As fun as the idea is, let's keep it out of our paleo art. Unless of course you're doing it just to do it, in which case go for it. I'd love to see it animated. Make sure you like this video and share it around. Leave a comment if you like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Pledge to my Patreon at any tier you like for a slew of many delicious offerings. Special thanks to patrons Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Steve Bradshaw, Thais Fenson, Arda Bayer, Ray M, Dana Manchester, Aphid Kirby, and Chris Frampton.